Let's give it up for Jesus. <laughs> Praise the Lord. That's a powerful testimony. And that's an, an encouragement for the younger people to start praying, isn't it? It doesn't have to be an old pastor with white hair. <laughs> if, you if you believe in Jesus, you're old enough to pray. I want to share today how to surrender to the Holy Spirit. What do I need to do to surrender to the Holy Spirit? In a lot of churches, like the Holy Spirit is like a forgotten God. People have heard about him, but they don't know about him. That's the same thing. A lot of people believe in God, but so does the devil. Just believing in God is not, doesn't, is not going to save you, is not going to bring you anywhere. Making him your savior is another thing. But making him your Lord, that is a forgotten thing too. How do we surrender? We, we all have an idea of what it looks like when cops pull you over, right? They tell you to lift, lift your hands and go your back against the car or whatever, and we do it. I have never done it. When I grew up, and I was a teenager like the teenagers in the back there, I lived in Mexico, and we would chase the police. The police wouldn't chase us. <laughs> we had better vehicles than the police had, so they had to run from us. See, some people know what I'm talking about. But that changed very fast. In 2009, that's where the cartels came in, and they would remove the police, and they put the cartels in as policemen. That's where people started to, sur to surrender to, to the cops. But when you surrender to the cops... When I was kidnapped in 2012 by the cartels, they handcuffed me, threw me in the back of their pickup. Whether I surrendered willingly or forcefully, that, 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 that was another thing. But I had nothing to say. I was under the authority of the kidnappers. They did with me whatever they wanted to do. If I want to surrender to, to the Holy Spirit, I first have to surrender to the will of God. Many people have no idea. They walk throughout their life, don't even know what God's will for them is. Do we know what the perfect will of God is for my life? Or are we still in the process of finding out? I know some 80-year-old people, even older, they still don't know. They're still trying to find out what, what is God's will for me. If you read in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, it says, And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed to the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. This is not a lie. That say that we will prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect, perfect will of God. Are you in the perfect will of God right now? Are you, or are you in the process of finding out what is God's will for me? Am I messing with somebody? We've been taught in the religious world where we grew up you can't know what God's will is for you and the Bible says that you can't know what God's perfect will is for you and I feel like some of us we sit here and we wonder what is God's perfect will for me if somebody would walk up to us with a, put a gun to our head and says do you know what God's will is for you Very quickly, we would start knowing what God's will is for us, don't we? <laughs> don't let the enemy deceive you by not knowing what God's will is for you. We know what God's will is for us. To live a holy and godly life. 
the first thing that comes to many, a lot of people's mind, what is God's perfect will for you? Well, a pastor, a song leader, a worship leader, those things that start rolling. That's what I grew up. That's how, maybe it doesn't, you, maybe no, nobody can identify with me. But that's when I grew up. What's God's will for you? Well, maybe being a pastor. We were thinking over here. And God, the gospel is simple. But we don't understand the simplicity of the gospel. We thought the gospel was for the upper people. It's for ordinary people like you and me. We will see that today. When we grow up a pastor, you could see him from far away. A pastor and his wife. They were both dressed in black, big lumpy clothes. And they looked sour as can be. You don't, you didn't even dare to, to look at them. But when I grew up, I thought th those were the holy people. I thought those were the holy people of God. A pastor would cry half of the time. They were the saddest people on, on, the, on the face of the earth. That's why I never wanted to become a Christian. I, I used to like my party life. That was fun. I, will, I, I was always thinking, once I'm 78, I will become a Christian. My grandma died when she was 77. That's when I changed my mind. I'm going to become a Christian when I'm 74. Because <laughs> just in case I don't outlive my grandma. So I'm going to become a Christian when I'm 74. Because I didn't want to be one of those sad people. Because I really enjoyed my life. I really did. I didn't know Jesus, but I enjoyed my life. I had a joy that would never last. Sometimes I did stupid things after on a party or stuff. I would feel bad. I would beat myself up for three days, three days in a row for it. But being a Christian, no, 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 no. After 74, 75, that, that's the place where I'm going to become a Christian. But that's just the opposite. Jesus wants the Christians to enjoy their life. He doesn't want Christians to be sour, sad, have horse faces, walk around like... Like on every funeral we heard, the pastor says, this person, he looked so sad, he'll get a good reward for being sad. I figured, man, that reward couldn't be very good if that... But I just knew something was off. If we live a holy and a godly life, you don't have to be a pastor, pastor to it. Young and old, God wants us to be happy. If we read the book of Philippians chapter 4 many times, he says, rejoice. And again, I say rejoice. He wants us to be happy. He wants us to rejoice. What's wrong? I feel so far away from you guys. <laughs> we first have to submit to the will of God in order to surrender to the Holy Spirit. What does the Bible say? What does it mean to surrender to the Holy Spirit? When you surrender, you lift your hand. We lift our hands, just like the, the, if the policeman pulls you over and he tells you to lift your hands, what would happen if you don't? Something would happen. If I surrender to the policeman, I'm under the authority of them. If I surrender to the Holy Spirit, I should be under the authority of the Holy Spirit. But there are so many things in life that we want to do on this side that we have to put down. If I want to surrender to the Holy Spirit. Who cares what I want? Who cares what you want? Who cares what I feel? Who cares what you feel? A lot, a lot of people, they, 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 be, they are in trouble. They say, if you only knew how I feel. Well, what does your feeling matter? Is that the truth that you're feeling? It is true that you're feeling maybe clumsy. Maybe you, you are, you are a mom or a dad and you had a bad day at work. Or you have... Four children at home, five children at home, and you're having a busy day. And at the end of the day, you probably don't even feel like a Christian. Have you ever had one of those days? Does that mean now you're not a Christian? If you don't know any better, then you probably would think, okay, I have to repent and be born again. But if those feelings don't, they should, those feelings shouldn't dominate us. They shouldn't rule us. John chapter 15 verse 13 says, Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down 
wants life for his friends. If we lay, lay down our life, the Holy Spirit is my friend. Am I willing to lay down my plans? My retirement, whatever it is, am I willing to lay down this life? It doesn't, it doesn't say die for your friends. It said lay down his life for his friends. Jesus died for his friends. But am I willing to lay down my life, my plans for Jesus? If I'm willing to do that, if I surrender to the cops, I'm under their authority. If I'm willing to, to lay down my life, I am under the authority of Jesus Christ. I'm under the authority of the Father. My life would look very different on this side and we would look at that, on that side. But this is what we have to do. We have to submit to the Father. This life is ruined, but here comes up a big difference. A huge transformed me that has been surrendered over there. This version is a lot better than what I surrendered over there. Listening to the Holy Spirit, sometimes it would be questionable. If you, look, if you read Luke chapter 1 verse 35 and 38, it's where the angel, and the angel answered and said to her, he came to Mary, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the, the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Then Mary said, Behold, the maidservant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Mary had some questions. How should this work? I have never slept with a man. How can I become pregnant? And the angel explained it. If the Holy Spirit tells you something, you can feel free to ask him questions. How, how can this come about? But surrender to him. We, we, we read a chapter before that. Zechariah, he was in the temple. The Holy, and the angel came to him too and said, you will, you will have a son. And his name should be John. And he says, this can't be. I am too old. How do you think I'm going to have a baby at this age? My wife is beyond having babies already. It still came to pass. Elizabeth got pregnant. But John was muted for disobeying the angel. When the Holy Spirit speaks to you, and he will speak to younger people and older people, there's no age limit to it. Ask him questions. Let him teach you. Because the Holy Spirit is a comforter. He's a teacher. Matthew 16 verse 24 says, then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Deny himself. My ego has to go. My wants and my desires have to go. And if I accept the desire of, of Jesus Christ, that will, that will, be, that will be different. There, you will pay a price on this side. There's, there, if you share... Your life with Jesus, you will also share the suffering. Jesus went through a lot of suffering, and you will you will have to, we will have to endure suffering too. That's a promise. A lot of people say, "Why? Why would I want to be a Christian if I have to suffer?" Well, you suffer a lot more consequences of you making stupid decisions here, and you are being guilty for suffering on this side, than being here. Suffering for Jesus, partaking his suffering. And, and I don't know, does anybody know where this? There's a verse in Romans that says that you'll have to partake in his suffering. Does anybody know that verse? My son read it to me the other day. But we, we will be transformed. If I'm willing to lay down my life for Jesus, we will be transformed. Just like this, the, the rod of Moses. It was called the rod of Moses, right? Who remembers that? Moses had a burning bush and he had a rod and it was called the rod of Moses. And when he threw it down, what, what happened to this rod? Who knows? It became a snake, a serpent. And when he picked it back up, what, what, what happened? It was a rod again. And what was the rod called now? It's called the rod of God. 
it became a weapon. It was just the rod of Moses before, but now it's the rod of God, and it became a weapon. So if you lay down your life and you become a rod of God, you'll be a weapon against the enemy. We heard somebody praying that we want to destroy the works of the devil. If you lay your life down and let Jesus pick you up, let the Holy Spirit pick you up, and you will be a weapon like this rod was. When Moses put it in the Red Sea, the sea parted. When Moses put it in the water, the plagues came up. There's all sorts of stuff. This rod became a weapon. When he hit the rock, water came out. That's how your life is going to look. If you want to lay it down for the Lord, you will become a weapon against the enemy. We should surrender to God's righteousness and welcome the Holy Spirit in our life. Welcome the Holy, let the Holy Spirit tell us what to do. Somebody might have a question, well, how, how can I hear the Holy Spirit? How will I know what, what, what is the Holy Spirit? What's not the Holy Spirit? Some people, they, they, they try to they go crazy by listening to the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit doesn't say nothing. It drives them crazy. One time I prayed over a person of, of, for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and he says, like, I, can't, I, I have never heard, heard from God. I, cannot, I have never heard from God. He says, can you pray for me that I will he, be able to hear God's voice? And I was new in this, and I just had this guy sitting on the floor, and, and he was just sitting here like this, and just... I was here over him praying like crazy, and he didn't hear nothing. And he was praying himself crazy too. Nothing happened. I said, this is not working. Let's try something else. He says, what? He says, I've tried everything. I said, have you ever listened? I said, you were praying yourself crazy. He says, the Holy Spirit couldn't even be loud enough for you, for you to hear anything. He says, just shut up already. But that's how a lot of people do. We want to hear something, but we pray ourselves crazy, and the Holy Spirit can't, can't the word in the edgewise. A while ago, my son came and he says, Dad, I've, try, I've been trying to hear from God. I want to have an answer. And I haven't heard anything. I've tried for three days already. He says, and, says, and the Lord doesn't say nothing? He says, no. Every time I listen, it's quiet. I said, what are you expecting? Well, I just want an answer, he says. Well, I says, what do you want? Or what, what do you want an answer for? And he explained. I says, well, let, let me pray for it. Maybe you will find, you, maybe the Holy Spirit will lead you. And I just put my hand on his forehead. And I, I says, well, Father God, I just I want you to give him peace about whatever he, you want him to do. And he looked at me. He says, is that, is that simple? I says, if you want an answer for this thing so badly, obviously you don't have peace about it. He says, is that what it is? <laughs> Well, I says, you sleep till the morning, and by the morning, you, there, there, he had three things that he wanted to do. I says, whichever one of these three, these three things you have peace about, I says, do it. Half an hour later, he text, I wasn't mad already, already, and he texted me. He says, Dad, I have peace about this thing. That was the Holy Spirit leading him. But sometimes the Holy Spirit speaks differently than we expect him to. Just like what I knew for sure if there was ever a day that I would be born again something big would happen a building would break down or whatever and I would just get out of the window and I would be all scratched up yet and I would be born again I was expecting something huge and it happened in the car the car didn't even flip I parked on their big oak tree 1996 in the summer I just told the pastor I'm kaput I don't know what to, what to do. I says, I, I'm stuck. He says, that's the best place to be. And it didn't feel so good. But he says, now, now, now you you're come to its end with yourself. Now, now the Lord can take you out. And it worked. And the car didn't even break. So, but I was expecting something big. Something big would happen. What would it look like if he surrendered to the Holy Spirit? If he look at the 70 disciples... 
that surrendered to Jesus and Jesus sent them out in Luke chapter 10, 17 to 24. This is what, what it looked like with these disciples when they surrendered. Then the 70 turned and returned with joy, saying, Lord, even demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I gave you the authority to tremble on serpents, scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. He says, all the power. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you. But rather rejoice because your name is written in heaven. He says, this, we should rejoice that our name is written in heaven. The demons are subject to us. That is a byproduct of being submissive to the Holy Spirit. Casting out demons is not going to bring anybody to heaven. You might say, no. When we first learned that we could cast out demons, we were trying to cast demons out of everything. We thought that was going to bring us a long way. But later he says, Rejoice because your name is written, written in heaven. In, in that hour, Jesus rejoiced in his spirit and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from wise and prudent and revealed them to, to babes. He says, there was a lot of wise men, prophets, that wanted to see these things. Now Jesus, he rejoiced in the Spirit. In the Holy Spirit, we can rejoice. We don't have to be sad. With the Holy Spirit, we can rejoice. And he, Jesus rejoiced that he had revealed us to ordinary people like you and I. That we can know these things. God gave... Jesus says in Matthew 28 that, that I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. And you and I, if we have Jesus, we follow the Holy, Holy Spirit, let the Holy Spirit lead us. We have, we have access to the same things as Jesus did. A lot of people do, would say, no, I, I, I don't. You might not know it. You might not feel it. It's again, your feelings are telling you no. But in the spirit realm, you, we do. The Bible says we should become childlike. A childlike faith. It, it doesn't say we should become childish. But a childlike faith. If you throw a child up in the air, it doesn't scare him because he has faith that you're going to catch him. If I surrender my life, my life to Jesus, I don't have to know how it's going to turn out. If God led me to it, he has empowered me to do it. The next one is surrender to the Lordship. This is a big one. Surrender to the Lordship. Thomas, he was, most people say that he is a doubter. And I'm not saying he's not. But he was the first one to call Jesus my Lord and my God. If I make Jesus mine, but I don't make him my Lord, what good is that? That means I don't lay my life down for him. John 20 verse 28 says, And Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. And if you look at Paul, Saul, when he was the convicted by the Lord Acts chapter 9 verse 5 and he said who are you Lord he didn't say who are you Savior he didn't say who are you God he didn't say who are you Jesus he says who are you Lord there's a huge different difference between a Savior and a Lord if I make Jesus my Savior and I don't make him my Lord do you follow do you get it? 
If he's my Lord, it all of a sudden doesn't matter. I become this weapon that this, the, the rod of Moses. My Lord and my Savior. If you, if you go, t turn to Genesis chapter 2 and 3, you will see so many times, you will see, 2 verse 8, verse 8 says, The Lord God planted the garden. And over and over in this whole chapter, it talks about the Lord God. It doesn't talk about God. It says the Lord God did this, the Lord God that, the Lord God that. And now the serpent comes in chapter 3. And the serpent talks to Eve and he says, did God really say? I'm very sure if the serpent would have said, did the Lord your God really say? Eve would have rebuked. The enemy but he twisted this a little bit he says did God really say and with that Eve answered she, she said God said now it wasn't the Lord God that was only God did you hear the difference as soon as Eve said God said she moved away from the Lordship. Now God was no longer the boss. Now she was the boss herself. Joseph, when Potiphar's wife was after him, she says, I would never sin against the Lord my God. If you make God your Lord also, that's going to make a whole difference in your life. I will not sin against the Lord my God. Because now I'm no longer my boss. We often hear about the landlord. If you, if you rent a house, you have a landlord, right? If Jesus becomes my Lord, he's also my boss. And that's where the Holy Spirit can, can start moving things in my life. If I allow him to be my boss. And the same thing, Saul, he became Paul. He was being transformed. Why didn't he just got totally transformed when he fell off of that horse? He was blinded. He says, Lord, who are you? And Jesus revealed himself, this is, this is me, who you are persecuting. He had to go into town. And the Lord called Ananias to go minister to him. Pray for him. When Ananias came and he prayed for him, his eyes got reopened. It fell, out, fell, fell off like shackles from his eyes. And he could see again. He, Paul was, had to humble himself and had to be ministered. By a minister, had to minister to him. Lay on his hands on him and that's where he, that's where he received this anointing. Some people say, I would never let anybody put hands on me to pray because I don't want to get, get, want to be have, I don't want this to be transferred into me the evil stuff that that person has. I wouldn't let any, just anybody come lay hands on me. But anointing can be transferred. We see, that, we see it from Elijah when he went to heaven. What is his name, the next guy name? Eliza? Elijah and Elisha? He, he, he threw his mantle back and he got, that, he got the double portion of the anointing what Elijah had when he went to heaven. So we, we can be prayed over and we can receive anointing by praying. And that's what Paul, Paul received. Paul received, he was ministered to. And if we want to have the Holy Spirit Lord over me, we have to remove things that do not belong. If we have something in our life that's a hindrance to the Holy Spirit, we should be willing to remove that. We should, we should be willing to remove it. If we read Ephesians 5, 15 to 21, it says, See that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Therefore do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. See, understand what the will of the Lord is, and do not be drunk with wine, in which is in 
in which is deception, deception, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another in fear of God. This is what we need. We need to submit to one another and we should come back to the fear of God, what happened in the church, in the book of Acts, where the fear of God came and when Peter spoke to Ananias and Sapphira, when they lied, not to, just to the people, but to, 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 they lied to, to, against God and the Holy Spirit. Both of them died and the fear of the Lord hit the house. We know that now. Does that bring the fear of, of the Lord to us? Or do we just think we have the Holy Spirit, we don't need to fear, fear the Lord? We need to fear the Lord and remove things. We would, we would probably say, well, we don't drink, we don't cuss, we don't swear, we don't, we don't do drugs, we don't use the F word. What do we have to remove? That's a hindrance to the Holy Spirit. A lot of times that's my thoughts. You don't know what I'm thinking, but there is somebody that knows what I'm thinking. A lot of times it's my thoughts need to be renewed. My language needs to be renewed. My tongue needs to be renewed. A lot of these things we need, to, we need to get rid of in order to become this weapon like Moses' rod was. Thank you very much for listening to me. And I'm going to ask Pastor Jake to come and minister, minister to us. Thank you, John, for giving us the word of God this morning. That was manna from heaven. Not just the stuff we bake in, bake in our ovens at home. This was manna from heaven, and we appreciate that. You know, a lot of us struggle with sin. Amen? And, you know, the, the Word of God tells us that when Jesus went to the cross, he took us into himself and when he was crucified, who, would, who else was crucified? Every person on this planet Earth was crucified. Now, it's our choice whether we receive that, that crucifixion because we also need to rise from the dead as well. And um, in Romans chapter 6, verse 6, um, Paul writes, he says, know that you were crucified with Christ. You see, up to that point in time, all of us are in Adam. And in Adam, all of us died spiritually. We're born spiritually dead. You know, the cutest baby that is born on this planet Earth, the mothers, the baby you, that God gave to you was the nicest looking baby that... that uh, amongst all the babies you've ever seen. Amen? Amen. Amen. But you know something? That little baby, by the time it's two years old, you know that it's a sinner because I, me, and myself now take over the self-life. And um, Paul gives to us um, the, the, the resurrection life through Jesus Christ we have to come when we're born again that old life was crucified when you go to a funeral and the person that's lying in the casket you can take a sharp stick and hit that person and he won't say nothing why? because he's dead and that is what our old life needs to be it needs to be dead tout <laughs> and when something is dead you put it in the ground and you bury it yeah. and that is what we need to as Christians need to do with our old life and then when we're born again we receive the life that the Holy Spirit brings to us it's the life of the Lord Jesus Christ you know Jesus was filled with his spirit Luke chapter 
I think, 1, verse 5, it says, before Jesus went into the wilderness to be tempted, it says that he was filled with the Spirit. And you see, when we're born again, the Spirit comes to live within us. That's when Jesus becomes our Savior, as Pastor John said. But we also need to make the cho choice that he will be the Lord of our life. That means that the old self-life, we see it as we put in the casket and buried. It's gone. It's dead. It can no longer uh, take dominion over you. Now, that doesn't mean that you and I won't struggle with sin. But the Holy Spirit will give us, as he renews our mind, we will begin to think the thoughts that, that Jesus thought. And he will transform us into the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, gentleness, kindness, goodness, all of those things. And I pray every morning, Lord, continue to transform me to be like Jesus so that when we look at each other, we don't see our outward self. We see Jesus in us. And then we will have power over, over sin. So how many of you here this morning say, I struggle with, with sin, and there's times where I allow sin to take, take dominion over me. Amen? We all do. And when, we, when that happens, that doesn't mean that we lose our salvation. It just means that we live a defeated Christian life, and Jesus wants us to, be, um, to live a victorious life. Christian life, one that is above the power of sin. And when we surrender to him, as Pastor John said, then the devil, or, or you see, we blame the devil for a lot of things, but it, it is the flesh, the old Adam in us that acts like the devil because that's where he gets his authority from. And so when we want to overcome him, we surrender to the Holy Spirit. And that's what I would ask of you this morning. Those of you who want to be set free from the power of your old sinful nature, if you would like to come forward and Pastor John and I will pray for you and, and ask you, the Holy Spirit, to, to show you how to lay down your life for Jesus so that he may rise up within us and we can live the victorious Christian life. So if you want prayer and you want to be set free, please come and we'll, we'll pray for you. And we, we'll believe, we'll pray a prayer of faith. We don't just say, well, we hope so. No. The word of God is not a hope so word. It is a sure word of God. And the sure word of God, when we stand on, on the promises of God, we will be victorious. We can tell the devil, you have to go to hell. That's the only person we should say that to. Yeah. You go to the place where you're going to spend the eternity. And so I'm going to ask if you want to, a prayer this, this morning, if you would come, and we will pray with you and ask the, the Holy Spirit to open up that part of your life that is alive with the Holy Spirit.